Hey guys, welcome back. Oh my god, Ruto, what the heck were you doing? Anyways, in the last episode, we got to Lord Jabu Jabu's belly, and in between episodes, I left Jabu Jabu's belly to go and get some Deku sticks because we were out. But then somebody told me in the comments that you can kill these dudes with Ruto's ass. So we're about to find out right now if this is true. Oh my god. <laughs> the most OP item in the game is actually Ruto's butt. Can we kill these guys in the air with Ruto? You can. This is amazing. I am in love. <laughs> this is like the funniest thing I've ever seen in my whole entire life. <laughs> We're just wrecking everything with Ruto's amphibious butt. It's okay. We're saving. We're conserving our sticks. Now, a couple episodes ago, I was wondering why you can't use a lot of Young Link's items as an adult. And people pointed out to me that all of the items would rot after seven years. So the sticks, the boomerang, the slingshot, all those items that are made out of wood. They can't, they couldn't stand the test of time, but it's okay. So now we get a big chest. This is normally the boomerang, but today we're going to get something else. This is either the map or an item. Hey, we got the nut upgrade. Nut. <laughs> okay, so that means the other chest we find in this dungeon is gonna be the map. Well, also, there's the heart container from beating Baronade, so we have that to consider as well. So there's two more op items we can get here, and then we also get a medallion or a spiritual stone from beating Baronade. Okay, let's fight this. I don't even know what these are. They're either tumors or some sort of penis-related. I don't really know what those are. I think it was pretty forward-thinking of Nintendo back in the day. One of the very first 3D games ever created. Nintendo made you go inside a whale as a dungeon. Nintendo has always been such a forward-thinking company, and I love them for that. And then the textures, like we're inside Jabu Jabu's intestines right now, I'm imagining. Well, I think we're inside his tail because the way these uh, tubes, whatever you would call them, the way they fan out makes it seem like we're inside his tail. But then at the same time, tails are really thin, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. Okay, we kill all the jellyfishes. And then this last one is green. We're getting so many hearts. We do not need this many hearts right now. But hey, I'll take it. And I'm going to give a quick um, welcome to all the new viewers that have come to my channel because of this series. A lot of new people have been finding my channel. And welcome. My name is Attacking Toucans. I am pretty freaking crazy. So if I say something that's really weird, don't mind me. It happens quite often. <laughs> it's just something you have to come to expect from this channel. But hey, it's 2018. I think people are used to weird stuff by now. Let's dodge these parasites. I'm not sure what Jabu Jabu's been eating, but it doesn't seem like it's very fresh because it's not looking too healthy. Yeah, okay, so killing that last giant swinging tube of death, it opens up this hole of death. <laughs> I don't even know what to call anything in this place. It doesn't, none of it's really biologically correct. Or maybe it is. I'm not a biologist. Do we get some more Sculptula tokens? I'm not sure how many we have. Let me collect these two and then we will check our numbers. Because there is also the prizes from getting the Sculptula tokens. Up to 50. Keep that in mind. The reason that they don't have it for the 100 Sculptula tokens is one, that would be ridiculous. And two, what you normally get as a prize from collecting all 100 Skulltulas is infinite huge rupees. So pretty much an infinite rupee supply. And that would be like a really weird thing to put into a randomizer. I'm really happy they didn't put it in there because that would really, really suck. Nobody would play it anymore. <gasps> Ruto found the thing. This is probably my favorite spiritual stone. Sapphires are just really pretty. I really wonder, I know that every astrological sign corresponds with some sort of gem. I'm a Scorpio, but I don't know what gym corresponds with that. If anybody's really big into astrology, you can let me know. I'm not really big into astrology myself. I don't know. I just think it's all really vague and it doesn't make that much sense. Some people like dead ass live their life based on astrology. Here, before I keep on talking about that, I found out one of the best ways to kill this guy. Wait. I might have messed up. Please don't tell me I messed up. Okay, no, I didn't. Okay, so you let him hit you while you turn around. Hit him with the boomerang. No, I messed it up. I freaking messed it up. Okay, we're going to have to do this the hard way. Can I hit him? Come on. 
stop him. You can actually kill him one hit with a <laughs> Deku Stick jump attack. Normally you can beat him in like five seconds if you hit him like right away, but I was really dumb. I forgot the order. And then I got really upset for a second. I was I almost I dead ass literally consider restarting the recording of this episode. <laughs> so I could try to do that quickly. That went through my mind for a split second, but then I was like, eh. Nah, that'd be kind of petty of you. Trying to make yourself seem like an expert Ocarina of Time player. You aren't, Tyler. You're pretty bad at this game. I mean, I'm fairly knowledgeable about this game, but I'm pretty bad at it at the same time. I was watching some of my friends play the game who were speedrunners, and they just make me feel just completely incompetent. Like, like what am I even doing with my life? Because in order for you to fully live out your life, you have to be a master Ocarina of Time player. Dang it. This is ridiculous! Okay, Octorok. You asked for it. You asked for it. That's what's up. But back to astrological signs. I have legitimately met somebody who said that there's certain people that she will not be friends with them based on their astrological sign because certain astrological signs just are not meant to align. I was like, huh, that makes you a kind of shit person. <laughs> <laughs> to judge people based on the month they were born. That's the other reason why I don't believe in astrological signs whatsoever, is because it's based on such a just weird, like, the month you were born. That's such a general, boring thing to base something off of. Now, if you had to take some, like, sort of really in-depth personality test to figure out what your astrological sign was, I'd be like, okay, maybe that makes a bit more sense. But to group people solely based on the month they were born, yeah, I'm not quite buying it. Okay, another gold sculptula. Oh, I forgot to check how many we have. Well, we'll add another to the list. And then we'll check. Da -da 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 -da. We currently have 13. Cool. So after this, we can go and turn in our first batch of gold sculptulas. We're almost there. This is the last room before the boss. The stipple is really just... I would almost say this temple gives me more nostalgia in this game than any other section of this game. I don't know why it is, but something about it. It's just such an iconic temple, like I said earlier. It's just so unique. What? Link, why are you not jumping off? You dumbass. Alright. Time to fight the brain of the whole operation. Pinky and the brain. <laughs> Do we get to see his name? No. They didn't cut out the cutscene, but they cut out his name for some reason. <laughs> Alright. This is such a fun boss, too. Honestly, one of the most fun bosses in the game. Doesn't It does require a little bit of waiting, but not that much. There's some bosses later in the game that require too much waiting, in my opinion. For example, I'm not a huge fan of Avagia because you have to wait. There's too many segments that require you to wait for him to fly back into his holes. Same with Morpha. I guess you can beat him quickly if you know some strats, but if you're not very good at him, he just takes so long. Phantom Ganon can also take a decent amount of time as well. Whoa. I'm just not a fan of waiting. I feel like that's one of the things that have changed in gaming design as time progresses, is that gamers don't want to have to wait on stuff. Like, we want to be able to play games as quickly as possible, because there's so many other games to get you to. If you make us wait for a million hours, then that's obnoxious. Now, I guess back when this game was made, there wasn't a whole lot of games to play, so it almost made sense to stretch the games out a little bit longer so they would feel like they occupied a bit more of your time. Oop. It's also people's imaginations were a little bit smaller, so fights like this were like 10 times more epic because we had never fully seen like fleshed out 3D graphics like this before, so we were just continuously astounded by what technology had gotten to. But now we're pretty spoiled as a generation. Oh, forgot we gotta hit him this time. Alright, shoot me with your futuristic sonar beams, because that makes a whole lot of sense. Oh, he actually got me. Fair game, Baronade, fair game. But, oh, I thought that was going to kill him. I got a little bit too climactic for that to not work. <laughs> I'm embarrassed now. Don't look at me, guys. I'm just kidding. You guys can't see me. I consider doing face cam for this Let's Play. But honestly, I am not a huge fan of face cams on Let's Plays. I think it kind of takes away from the gaming experience. 
Now for streams, I think face cam is much better. But for let's plays like this, I don't think face cam really adds to it. In a way, I feel like it distract, it detracts, because you'd be looking at the face way more, and I don't know. It's just not my thing. Just It all comes out of personal opinion, though. This is going to be the map. Yep. Great. Love that. And here's our impatient woman. Oh my gosh, she has the lewd, rosy cheeks. She's trying to act all angry and everything when all she really wants to do is... Well, we already saw what she wanted to do earlier in the episode, at the beginning. Forest medallion. I will take that. That is a great medallion to get. Because if we can also get the water medallion, that'll activate the cutscene where Sheik is thrown around in Kakriko Village, and then we get the Nocturne of Shadow. The only way to get that is to get the first three medallions. And then if we get the Spirit Medallion, we can activate the cutscene in the Temple of Time that gives us the Light Arrows. So that's another good thing to get. And then if you get all three Spiritual Stones, that's what activates the cutscene where Sheik and Zelda are riding away from Hyrule Castle on their horse. So getting the Spiritual Stones and Medallions do actually unlock a few of the items in the game. Alright, well now that we beat our first dungeon, we have to decide where we want to go next. I guess we can just go to Kakriko Village, but I won't make you wait. I'll see you guys there. Alright, and we made it to the Skulltula House. During a really nice sunset. Honestly, I'm really impressed also how Nintendo made such good night and day cycle for one of their first three-dimensional games as well. It's really impressive. Alright, here he is, doing jumping jacks over here. He's finally not a spider anymore. And he rewards us with the Stone of Agony. Now, I'm sure a lot of people don't fully know what this is. So back when the Nintendo 64 came out, later on they added an addition to the controller called the Rumble Pack. And it allowed the controller to rumble. Let's get ready to rumble! That was like some cutting edge technology back in the day. And they really emphasized it with Ocarina of Time. And so what this item does normally in the game is it vibrates every single time you're above a hitting grotto or one of those holes in the ground so you can know where they are. But in this ROM hack, what it does is if you talk to one of the Gossip Stones, which <laughs> thank you guys for letting me know what they're called. They're Gossip Stones, not Sheikah Stones. If you talk to those, it'll give you hints as to where certain items may be. And then it also just tells you random information. Not every single Gossip Stone tells you something useful. Okay, I'm gonna go up to Goron Mountain real fast, and then we're going to buy some bombs there so we can go all the way to the top of the mountain and visit the Great Fairy. And then there's also some stuff in the Death Crater as well. Ooh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to buy some beans from the bean salesman back at Zora River. I should have done that. We'll have to go back, because there's three beans we need to plant to get different heart pieces. There's one in the graveyard, one in the desert Colossus, Colossus um, outside of the spirit temple, and the last one is inside the death crater. Oh, hello little guy. You're so cute. I love Goron so much. Okay, so there's a couple things we can do in here real fast. First, oh, I jumped down too far. First is we can stop this rolling Goron with one of our bomb shoes. But we can only stop him when he's in this cavern over here, which is perfect timing. We stop him back here. Normally he gives you a bomb bag upgrade. I don't know why you have to stop him in this, like, back room. Dang it. No. Don't. Good thing our bomb can chase him down. Get him! Get him! No, we missed! No! And now we have to wait for him to circle all the way around again. I was gonna read that sign, too! I was interested. I'm like, what does that sign say? And then I watched the bomb shoe murder it! In cold blood. This is so sad. It was so young. It had so much information to tell us. And we'll never know what beautiful information it had to share. This is honestly the saddest day of my life. And we only have one bomb she left, so we can't mess it up this time. Okay, and thank you. For a second, I thought I was going to dodge him. Oh, he's inside the wall. Mayday. All right, I'll give you this in praise of your courage. Courage? The big bomb bag. We actually got the bomb bag upgrade. Um, you're not, I guess that's actually kind of strange that we got what we were supposed to. That doesn't happen very often. 
But didn't we also get the Sun Song? Where we were supposed to get the Sun Song? I believe so. Uh. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is go to the Lost Woods through the Goron City shortcut. We don't have any bombs right now because we're all out. But fortunately, we have some Din's Fire. Well, before we. Well, go ahead and light these bombs real fast. And then we're gonna go to the Goron Shop. Damn! That was pretty freaking awesome. I'm not even gonna lie. Let's go to the Goron Shop real fast and buy a few more bombs because bombs are super useful and I could definitely use some. I really like doing this. This is so awesome. That hurt, Link. I'm not sure if we had full hearts or not before that, so I don't know if it did. Look at him just tapping that counter. Tap. 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 Um. Should I get 10 bombs? No, I'll just get five. You can't get this right now. Why? What the hell? Oh. I'm an idiot. I forgot that when you upgrade your bomb bag, it refills it up for you. Okay, well, <laughs> I will take it. I am happy we get the bomb bag upgrade now because we really needed those bombs. Alright, so next thing we'll do is we're going to go to Saria's forest. I don't know why I named it after Saria. The forest belongs to Saria. She claimed it as her own. We're going to come back here and get the song from her that we normally get. So I always have this memory whenever I play Ocarina of Time, and it takes me back to when I first played the game when I was in fourth grade. So I remember back then I really wanted to ride a guidebook for Ocarina of Time. And so for one of my class projects, I did just that because I was in this class where we had computers and we learned how to use Microsoft Word and we had to like make a book of some sort. I forget the exact project, but I remember making a Ocarina of Time guidebook. It ended up only going to Adult Link. My guidebook only taught you how to turn into Adult Link because I didn't have time to write it for the whole entire game. But I remember one time I had to go to the principal's office for something. I got in trouble a lot in elementary school. Mostly because kids are tattletales in elementary school. Like They will tell on you for anything. It's annoying. And I remember being in the principal's office and me and my friend who I was doing a pro the project with. We were there for a long time and we were just drawing out some of the maps from Ocarina of Time. And I remember distinctively that we drew out... Oh, we got Saria's song. We were drawing the map for the Lost Woods and it was really confusing because we were like, wait. It was like a maze and we were, we were wondering if there was like something we were missing. We would go down every single log to see if there was like something that we might have missed. It was a really long process and this was back before we knew about game facts. So we were having to do it all like from our own resources. We had to learn everything ourselves, but it was really cool. It's a really fond memory of mine. So you guys, I've always been a nerd. I've always been a nerd and I always will be a nerd. Link, you're grabbing onto a lot of ledges, buddy. I'm going to talk to some of these gossip stones and see if we can get some knowledge. I overheard this. They say that the frozen cavern echoes with the song of sandy statues. Sandy statues. So I'm guessing the ice cavern is going to give us the Requiem of Spirit. And they say that the Mask of Truth yields a common coin. Okay, so <laughs> doing the whole mask trading side quest, not really worth it because we would just get rupees apparently. And that's no bueno. Alright, next thing, since we have Saria's song, we can do a couple of things. That first off allows us to go and make Darunia a dancy boy. But there's also a heart piece we can get inside the Lost Woods as well. I'm trying to remember. Did I ever do... Wait, I, I'm lost. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. Did I ever get the heart piece that you're supposed to get from doing the Ocarina memorization game down here? I don't think I did. So I'm going to do that real quickly. And just because I'm a nice fellow... I will not make you watch this, but it is really nice because they only make you do it one time. In the original game, you have to do this three times and they make the song longer and longer each time, but they cut all, all the fat and they got to do it once.
And for those of you who want to hear the final song, it's... Man, I know, my voice is quite beautiful. You might be thinking to yourself, wow, is that Susan Boyle? I thought this was attacking toucans, but no, it's attacking toucans. I know I sound a lot like Susan Boyle, but I fooled you guys. I'm so deceptive. Okay, so there's two more items we can get in the Lost Woods, and I'll get those before ending the episode. So, first thing is we're going to play Saria's song for the lone Skull Kid in here playing his flute. I always wonder, because I don't think Skull Kids age, I wonder which of the Skull Kids inside the Lost Woods is the one that we run into in Majora's Mask. Or if you actually see the same one. You probably don't, because this is Hyrule and Majora's Mask is in Germania. You know, Saria's song, we should be friends. Here, take this. Okay, we're filling our wallet back up. That's not terrible, because I'm going to go ahead and buy some magic beans with those. And the last thing we can get in here. Should I talk to this Gossip Stone? You know what, I'm not going to talk to the Gossip Stones, because I don't like finding out where certain objects are. I like being surprised. I showed you guys what it does, but I'm not going to talk to it anymore, because I like the surprise. I surrender! To make your quest easier, I can enable you to pick up some more deck of sticks, but it'll cost you 40 rupees. Sure, buddy boy. Oh, yeah. So worth it. What a great way to end the episode, don't you guys think? We ended up losing 35 rupees from that. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and end here. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button for me. It really means a lot. And I will see your sexy faces in the next one. Take care, guys. Pop that. If you get a, if you got a head, then put it up, break it down, put the backwards. Yeah. Pull the King Kong hanging from the rafters. Yeah. Give me party for the hell of it. I can super celebrate. Hit it, put the town like Rembrandt. Crew finick from the floor like a Roomba. Who can I'm a Tata Timona Pumba? Doing the salsa in Havana, Cuba.